Hi, Jennifer. Before we get started, I'll tell you a little bit about the stencil brushes and the various things that you may need for an average project. No ordinary paintbrush will do. Okay, a stencil brush is flat and it's round. Nearly everything it does is either flat on or round on. So you remember flat and round and those two brush strokes. Okay. To hold your stencil on, as I pick one up here, you can either use a spray repositioning adhesive, such as this one. If you're using spray uh, re repositioning adhesive, you only want the lightest mist on the back of the stencil, okay? It mustn't be too sticky. So once the back of the stencil has been sprayed, if there is too much, it will stay mm. stuck to your hand, mm -hmm. okay? When it's pushed into position, you should be able to peel it nicely. All right, so I'm going to try the spray adhesive and see how this works. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Whoops, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> okay, 12 inches away. Oh, 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 oh. A oh. light mist. Can oh. I just show you? Let's do no more with this. Brilliant. <laughs> okay, now if I put this into position, Normally, if there was a light tack on the back of that, mm -hmm. that would just be enough to hold it. I have a feeling, oh, this is all over my fingers. Okay. This, this is, is not yeah. what you want. You see mm -hmm. how it transfers? Leaving the glue on there. Yeah. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. It's left a lot of the glue exactly. right there. That could damage your stencil. So, okay. you want the light tack repositioning adhesive, but you want a, a mist across the back of the stencil. Okay. Don't squirt. Mist. Okay? Don't okay. squirt it. Okay. Mist. All oh, right. Brilliant. That is really a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to start with this rather fabulous looking stencil mm -hmm. here. Now don't be daunted. It is exactly the same process whether or not you're stenciling a small card, maybe for someone's birthday or whatever, or a much larger project. It is all the same kind of technique. Now you can either tape your stencil into position or you can use a low-tack repositioning spray, such as this one here. We've got quite a quite a good structure on this shape so tape should be enough for us at this point your stencil should be held flat to its surface we're just taking a small amount of this particular design to work on so we'll just tape off the bits that we don't need now sometimes you will be able to take the paint straight from the lid of the pot you never want to dip your brush actually into paint so you would either use the lid of the pot or you decant some paint onto a paper plate such as we have here acrylic paint tends to be my favorite mm -hmm. but if you are using say a roller and you're using it on a wall and you may be using one color then you would use household paint okay you know it's, mm -hmm. you will learn as you go along the different sorts of paints that are going to work best for each job but mm -hmm. I would say as a rule a water-based paint okay you only take a very small amount of paint onto the bristles of your stencil brush and then you work that paint into the bristles. Mm -hmm. Then your secret ingredient, uh -huh. paper towel. Okay, right, a little dabber. <laughs> if everyone knew about the paper towel, nobody's paint would bleed underneath the stencil, really. Okay. So you're going to use a very small amount of paint. You work it then into the paper towel. So you've pretty much taken everything off. There's just the littlest mm, bit left. Not quite. You'll be surprised how far this goes. You can either tap your paint on, mm -hmm. okay, known as stippling, tap, 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 or you can apply the paint mm -hmm. in small circles. Now, the important thing at this point is that you just tickle the surface. Okay. Remember that, okay? So far, we've learned that brush strokes are flat on or they're round on, mm -hmm. and you just tickle the surface. Okay. If you want to make the paint strong in color and depth, you go over it a second time. 
it's just going to look a right mess, but just to show you so far those different strokes. Mm. Can you see okay. all yes. the different depths of colour we've mm -hmm. got from one scant amount of paint on mm -hmm. our brush and just by the different ways that we would use it. Okay. Then you go back again, take up another small amount, go back to the same patch on your paper towel and then again work it through the holes in your stencil depending on which brush stroke you are I doing. I think that's a big mistake I've made in the past is I've had way too much paint on my brush. Don't I've worry. never gotten it that dry before. Yeah, it really is surprising how far the paint will go. It is much faster to swirl the paint than to stipple it. And large brushes work, usually work much better for you than small ones. Small ones are for details. Mm -hmm. So there are various different sizes you can use. I'm going to be showing you shading, blending, and all sorts of other things um, throughout our lesson. Okay. So we'll stick with this smaller brush for now. If I was going to do this all in one color, I would certainly be using this size. I see. Okay. Now I'm adding just a little bit of extra color around the outside edge of this petal. It's important that the edges of the pattern are there. Mm. The middle can almost take care of itself. Okay. You see, there is no paint applied at all here. Mm -hmm. But it will make sense right. when, we, uh, when we remove the stencil. Okay. I usually say just do enough to show you that you bothered. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be in each area. The primary purpose of this little bit of demonstration is to show you the two different techniques, the stipple and the swirl, and to prove to you how very, very dry this paint will be. Mm -hmm. See how we're still going with that small amount of paint? It's amazing how much coverage you get with such little paint. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get even more so when you're not underneath the studio light <laughs> and talking at the same time. It's mm -hmm. amazing how quickly you will get through this. Now, the point here is to oh, show you how dry dry. that is. Now, just rub your hands over that. No, seriously, oh, you really can dry. really rub Literally your hand dry. over it. Yeah. Wow. And it's beautiful. I love the well, it just different textures. Yeah. And it shows you all those different depths of color mm -hmm. were from one small stencil brush and just a squirt of paint. Now, I'm going to place the stencil back into position. You see, that's the good thing about having so little paint. You don't have to wait for anything to dry. We've got to reposition this so that there are no white spaces. All right. Okay? Right, let's go with that. Now I'm going to remove this because you're going to do the next piece on from here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Everything you may need then. I'll give you my stencil brush. Magic paper towel. Magic paper towel. All right. There you go. Okay, so I'm dabbing, and then I'm swirling. Swirl. Swirl. Swirl really both work them. it. Just a small patch. Okay. Small patch. Imagine that you're stirring paint at All this right. point. Well, you are stirring paint, but really work it in. Now go to the paper towel. All right. And I do the and same thing. And it's a more here. gentle stirring than you've just done now. Okay. Round and round. Bigger. That's it. All you right. want to work that paint into the bristles of the stencils. Oh, I brush. see. So I'm not trying to yeah, get it off. Good. I'm trying to no, get it No, you're in. working it in. That should be okay now. Okay. Start very lightly and on the edge of your shape. Okay. There's a reason for it being on the edge of the shape. Okay, tap, tap, tap. That's it. Don't think about it. The paint can only go where there are holes. The paint's not going to go anywhere it shouldn't because it is so dry. All right. So when you finish that bit there, try mm -hmm. the other technique. Make sure all the space is filled in. Okay. That's nice, isn't it? Do you mm -hmm. see? You're just tickling around. At this point, you're stirring tea, so it's a lot more gentle. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I'm stirring and, tea. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to make the color stronger, you go over it a second time. All right. And that will always give you clean, sharp edges. Okay, so that's why I'm getting around the outside because I want those edges to be you do. pronounced. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. And then the inside is less the inside critical. more or less takes care of itself, yeah. All right. 
Is that enough or should I do more? Yeah. Do you want to have a look? Sure, let's take I'll a keep my hand on here so we can place it again easily if need be. All right. Okay, well, so what pretty have you cool. got? This is the first one you've done. That's entirely brilliant. We just build and okay. grow from there. All right. Yeah, that's great. When it starts to be hard work, mm -hmm. that's when you go back more paint. and take more paint. So you want me just to dab and then swirl? I want you to swirl and swirl. Swirl and yep. swirl. Swirl and swirl. Got it. Yep. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, swirl onto your paper towel. Big swirl. Big yeah, swirl. Yeah, come on. Go for it. Okay. And now put it through the holes in your stencil. All right. Yeah. There is something I do call, that I call my dab test. Show me the dab test. How okay, the dab test. Let's get a clean piece of paper. Okay, so we'll start right from the beginning with the dab test. Take a small amount of paint. Stir. Okay, big stirring. Slightly more gentle stirring. You can keep going back to the same patch because all okay. you're doing at this point is working the paint into the bristles of the brush. Okay. Then you're drying the tips of the bristles. Tap, tap, tap. This is a dab test. If it smudges, oh, there's too, too much, much paint. paint. See, there's a comic okay. tail there. Okay. So you would go back, just take off another bit of paint. Ah, ah we can work with that. Okay. okay. So it is dry before it's even put through the holes that is in such your stencil. Revelation. Yep. Once you realize how little paint to use, this will all become mm -hmm. very, very mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're working with more than one colour, you need a brush for every colour that you're working with. Okay. I've got three different sizes here. Not that it's particularly important that we work three different sizes, but we've got them, so why not? There's also, very handy, a double-ended one. Mm -hmm. We will start, first of all, with one of the smaller brushes, and we're just going to add some highlights. We're going to add the highlights first. When I'm stenciling, you usually find that you're making lots of repeating pattern. You don't need every repeat to be the same, but you do want it to be similar. Mm -hmm. So putting the colors on in the same order is enough to give you a similar look through all of the stencil repeats. So I start with the lightest shade, work towards the darkest, that way it's nice and easy to remember which sequence the colors went on. So I will be going from yellow to green to red. Okay. Okay. And we'll start off with this yellow colour. So take a small amount of paint, work it into the bristles of your brush. Dry those bristles off by working the paint well into the bristles of the brush. Now we're going to apply this colour. I do it fairly randomly, really. So we've got a little bit going on to, we'll do a little bit on one of the leaves. More here onto the petals. That will just give us a little bit of variety when we go to put the next colour on top of it. So next colour, green. Work that in, just as we did before. Stir it in, dry it off. Now you can do, when every time you're trying an absolutely new paint, mm -hmm. a different colour, it is worth doing that little dab test, just to tap your brush, rub your finger over the mark, make sure it doesn't, doesn't smudge. Streak. Okay. Yeah, I like to do that every time I'm using a new brush mm -hmm. or a new colour of paint, because paint colours behave quite differently, even mm -hmm. though they all may be the same make. Okay. Swirling my colour on here, just tickling away at the surface. So you're choosing swirling versus the stippling, and how do you decide when to do that? Speed, usually. Uh, I see. Okay. <laughs> the swirling, I find, is speedier. Okay. Uh, if you want to add a little bit of variety, take a bit of extra colour around the edge of your shape. The extra colour doesn't go into the middle. Okay. It goes always on the edge. Mm -hmm. Now, very often, I would just take up my colour into the next shade, and I, I like colours to blend into each mm -hmm. other. If you don't, then cut either a little piece of stencil film off the edge mm -hmm. of your stencil, or cut a piece of paper, and you can use that as a mask. I so see. you mask off where you don't want the paint to be. Okay. And my hand's going to be right in the way there, so let's do it this way around. 
All right. So that, easier than tape. Yeah, that will mask. I tend not to do that. You know, I like the soft, organic mm -hmm. look of the stenciling. Mm -hmm. But if that's not your thing, then uh, that's how to... That's how to mask off without using tape. So we've got our last colour. We're working this in here. Once again, we've gone back, working it off. Yes, yeah, so our paper towel will become a work mm -hmm. of art in its own mm -hmm. right. Start on the edge, work your way into the design. Do you know it's a matter of preference as to what stroke you like? Mm -hmm. I very rarely use the stippling. Oh, if I I'm see. doing something that I want it to look maybe traditional, I would uh, maybe use the stippling more so. Okay. It's a very pretty effect. I don't usually, uh, the way that I'm showing you is a very speedy way of stenciling. Okay, so we're going round and round here. Bit of extra colour on the outside edge. We've got the yellow going on underneath, which is shining through this burgundy colour. And that should make it really quite nice and strong. We've got mm -hmm. it stronger in the centre of the shapes. But something else I'm just going to do. Take a little bit more red paint there because it's beginning to dry out. Go back to the same patch to work the paint in. Dry a little bit off. I'm going to take some of that colour and blend it onto the green. Give it a little more depth. Yeah, it just mm -hmm. softens the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So that really should be enough. Let's make it really strong in the centre here. There we go, round and round. So if you want to build up colour, you do it lightly, but in layers. Mm, I see, okay. Yep, yeah, and that should give us a soft looking flower with lots of colour oh, that's beautiful. going on in it. And this is dry, including that bit in the centre mm -hmm. where we just made it very strong. And so, I love, it's, it's sort of a glowing effect with the That's with putting the yellow underneath. Mm -hmm. So you've got something really quite colourful there just from three mm -hmm. paints, three brushes. Beautiful.